International Red Cross recommends that all persons have an emergency survival kit with multi-day supplies of the most essential items. This is in case of any natural or man-made crisis resulting in a need for evacuation or a major disruption of day-to-day -day services. Part of this emergency kit is what I would call a digital bug-out bag. It includes copies of personal documents, cell phone with chargers and extra batteries, and family and emergency contact information. Many, if not all, of these copies should be physical, but paper documents can easily get destroyed by floods, fire, and collapse. They can be lost or stolen, and in case of theft, your paper documents are not encrypted and they could be easily abused for fraud, which is the last thing you want to think about in a crisis. Having a secure digital backup gives you an additional fail-safe if all else is lost. Hopefully you will never be in a situation where you need this, but it's always better to be prepared because this can save you the precious seconds that might be decisive in an emergency situation. A digital copy has advantages that are impossible to achieve with physical papers. You can securely encrypt your files on a tiny microSD card that can fit inside anything. If someone steals it, they wouldn't be able to read the contents. Because it's so small, it can be significantly protected against water, fire, and weather elements while still remaining easily transportable. A small microSD card can be hidden in a ubiquitous item or sewn into a piece of clothing to prevent it from being stolen. You can put your card inside a waterproof Faraday bag and a fireproof case alongside your cell phone, chargers, and extra batteries. A secure digital backup gives you the flexibility you need to adapt it to your particular threat model depending on your situation, geography, or country. So in this short tutorial, I'll guide you through the process of creating an encrypted digital backup on a microSD card, how to securely copy and store your files, and how to protect it from theft, loss, and physical elements. I'll also extend this tutorial to include emergency items and apps that could help you better navigate through a crisis situation. This won't take long, so let's begin. I chose a microSD card for this purpose because it's the most versatile storage medium for a digital bug out bag. Technically, a USB flash drive will be the most widely accepted standard among any modern computer, laptop, or even mobile devices. However, USB drives are usually bigger and thicker than just the raw frame of a microSD card, and hiding your encrypted backup might be just as important as encrypting it. If you want to go for something like attaching a USB drive to your keychain and always keeping it with you and you don't want to hide your backup out of sight, then choose a USB drive. Whatever option is better than nothing. SD cards generally provide larger capacity, much cheaper than USB flash drives. SD cards are also more resilient than flash drives against malware that could be carried on the medium to other computers. Once you chose your storage medium, it's time to encrypt. Our encryption software of choice is going to be Veracrypt. It's a cross-platform free and open source encryption app that works on Windows, Mac and Linux. It is able to create encrypted files, partitions and even entire operating systems. It can also provide hidden volumes and hidden operating systems with a decoy volume if you need plausible deniability for when you are forced to unlock your data. Download the app from veracrypt.fr and before installing it, verify your download for additional security. Veracrypt has a guide on how to verify their signatures for Windows and Linux. I'm using Linux, so that's what I'm following here. For best security for hidden volumes, use a live Linux operating system. First, verify the checksum with the simple SHA-256 sum command and compare the output to what's published on the Veracrypt website. Checksums are in a file that can be found at the bottom of the downloads page. If there is a match, I can proceed. PGP verification is just a matter of copy-pasting GPG commands into the terminal and adjusting for the current version of Veracrypt. I'm looking for good signature in the output. Once verification is done, I can install. When you install Veracrypt, you can start encrypting your storage. Encrypting an entire partition or drive will erase all of your data, so be careful to select correctly. You can choose to create an encrypted Veracrypt volume that will act as a normal file that can be copied or sent over the internet. This file can be securely stored on your SD card. The advantage of this setup is that you can keep a backup at your trusted friend's location and have them send you the volume over the internet that only you will be able to decrypt. 
Make sure you select the proper size of the volume so that it can house all of the documents and files you want to protect. I'm going to choose to encrypt my entire card because I don't have a trusted friend, because I have no friends, and I don't know if I can keep doing this any longer. Modern encryption algorithms rarely get mathematically broken, but it could happen in the future. If you're optimistic about having a future in the first place, choose a cascading encryption algo to have that sale faith and have more future-proof security. The probability that three distinct encryption algorithms will be broken is significantly lower than the probability that only one of them will be broken. There is an option to select a hidden or a standard VeraCrypt volume. Encryption is the same. The only difference is that with a hidden volume, you create a decoy volume with junk data that you don't mind disclosing to your adversaries, and a real volume they don't want to share with untrusted parties. They are protected by different passwords and will only be unlocked when a correct password is entered. If all the security precautions are met, your adversary shouldn't be able to prove you have a hidden volume. Hence, it gives you plausible deniability when you're forced to give up your password. I recommend that you check Vercrypt's official security requirements for hidden volumes if you want to go this route. To keep this tutorial simple, I'll go for a standard encrypted volume. Assume someone could get physical access to your encrypted volume and they could attack it with trillions of guesses per second. Choose a strong passphrase that's at least 30 characters long. It's best to make a memorable phrase that's long and doesn't contain any special characters to keep it simple for your memory. Do what works for you, but remember, if you forget your passphrase, you'll never unlock your volume. A phrase like, splinter it into a thousand pieces and scatter it into the winds, is 53 characters long, easily memorable and most definitely uncrackable. Unless we're talking about cracking skulls with magic bullets. <coughs> for most of the Veracrypt setup, you go for the default settings and follow the steps until you finish the process. Once you created your encrypted volume, it's time to make copies of your most important documents. Make sure to do this using a secure scanner or a camera that is not connected to the internet. Open Vercrypt and mount your volume using your passphrase. Transfer your copies into the volume and delete the original copies from your camera or scanner. Think about what to include in your secure backup. Red Cross recommends medication list and medical information a proof of address, a deed or lease to your home, passports, birth certificates, and insurance policies. Think about also about the files of the people in your household. I would also add to this list any personal photos or files you want to keep, and also your passwords. For this, I would recommend a password database that you can generate using password manager KeePass XC. Download KeePass from the official website and make a backup of all the login details you use. You should be using a password manager anyway to make strong and unique passwords for all of your online services. Your password database will be encrypted for additional protection so that when you unlock your Veracrypt volume, your passwords are still protected. Remember to also securely backup your second factor authentication. You should use a 2FA for your online accounts for better security. If you lose your second factors, you might lose access into your accounts and recovery might take days. It's always best practice to make backups of 2FAs as well. Once you're done with securely backing up all your important files, create a backup of your backup. Because one is none and none is two or two is one, I don't know, whatever. To securely backup your secure backup, don't just copy your Veracrypt volume file into a new location. Instead, create a new Veracrypt volume following the same steps. Mount your main volume and your new volume and copy and paste all of the files from your main Veracrypt volume into the new one. If you're encrypting an entire card like I do, you will need two cards. Protecting physical security of your backups is just as important as the encryption itself. Give me the password. It's always better having to avoid torture in exchange for your passphrase by not revealing to your adversary you have a digital backup in the first place. Michael Basil uses a coin that can fit a micro SD card in it. Other solutions could be toys, clothing, or low value items of no particular interest. Keep in mind that you want to protect your card from damage, dust, and weather elements. You might want to have a waterproof Faraday bag that can also house your cell phone, batteries, and charger. If you use a tactical-looking Faraday bag, it might hint to your adversaries you're keeping something of value. So always consider your operation security. 
out of sight is out of mind. That's it for the encrypted backups. Now let's add some more items into our emergency digital bug out bag. A waterproof or a fireproof Faraday bag might come in handy when it comes to your most important devices. You should have a dumb phone with multiple SIM cards to always have the best connection available in your area. Hack extra chargers, batteries, cables and a power bank. If you use Fido security tokens for your 2FA, hack a backup of those as well. I use nitro keys because they are the most secure, but solo key, only key or even a Yubi key is better than nothing. House keys, car keys could also be stored safely inside a weatherproof Faraday bag. When it comes to your smartphone, you should download apps with offline content for emergency situation. My list includes OSMN, this is a free and open source privacy respecting map and navigation app. Be sure to download offline apps into your phone and update them regularly. TrailSense is a good app for navigation off track, offline weather forecast, and survival. Offline Wikipedia is a huge source of relevant information. Download as much as you can and is important to survival and emergency situations. It's always handy to have an offline survival guide in a digital form that can be read at night without available lights. The same goes for first aid and medical guides. You should also keep an app that helps you recognize plants and organisms based on their appearance so that you can forage for wild edibles and herbs. Your digital bug out bag should always be ready, updated and available. It should be a grab and go bag that you always know what's inside and you don't have to think about it in an emergency. If you have any questions or points to discuss, head over to my subreddit for input from the community. Comment your ideas and points to consider for a digital bug out bag and share this video with everyone around you. You might never know when this information might be needed. Hopefully never. But we all know you're not hopeful. You're just hiding your crippling depression. Or maybe that's just me.